Okay, Steve. Uh, yeah, to give a little background about myself, uh, I'm a senior Salesforce architect. I've been a, a Salesforce consultant uh, for almost like 14 plus years. The total experience in IT is uh, 16 years. Um, yeah, I was a, a Java J2 developer before and then started working uh, alongside uh, a Salesforce project with the same client and then I slowly progressed to my career, like worked as a Salesforce developer, admin, uh, and a solutions architect. And, uh, and now I'm a senior Salesforce architect at a credit rating company. I worked uh, with different domains within Salesforce, like uh, credit, ra uh, credit rating, financial, nonprofits, um, and asset management, uh, and media, manufacturing, retail. So yeah, it goes on. Uh, so yeah, this is a little background about myself. So can you give a little uh, uh, introduction about yourself? Yeah, so I'm an aspiring Salesforce developer. I've been studying very hard for the past one year. Uh, I heard about Salesforce being a very exciting field. So, so I really want to become a Salesforce developer. I don't have a background in IT. Uh, actually, I studied business, accounting, but I want to get into Salesforce. I want to change my career. I would like to have a uh, uh very big career shift yeah and I, and so i've been uh, doing trailhead i've been watching udemy videos i've done personal projects i've been learning apex and a bit of javascript and i've been volunteering for uh, nonprofits, helping them set up salesforce and uh, I've, I've been attending very actively trailblazer community group events i have a salesforce mentor so i've been very active and in this community and i'm looking for an opportunity to to get my first full-time salesforce developer job and so i'm very excited to talk to you and see um see if i'm a good fit for you awesome so uh, have you worked on uh, salesforce projects uh, before like apart from salesforce trailheads have you worked on a real time implementation yes i the re real implementation i've done is for a couple of nonprofits. Uh, in the Washington DC area, and they are uh, trying to use Salesforce for for keeping keeping track of donations and also for web to lead generating web to lead forms so that they can um, uh, find potential donors. Okay, all right. So, do you know about the various Salesforce objects, standard objects? Yes, sir. That we have in Salesforce, certainly. and what is the relationship between them? Do you know about those? Yeah, certainly. It, um, there are a couple of standard Salesforce objects. Uh, the core Salesforce object probably is the account. It has, uh, and then there is a opportunity, contact, lead, case. Okay. All right. So which uh, side of uh, like there's like sales cloud, service cloud, like which is uh, uh, which topic are you more familiar with? Yeah, um, based on my experience um, helping with helping nonprofit implementations, I'm okay. more familiar with uh, the sales then, side. Um, okay. Because we are trying to find uh, one of the biggest tasks, goals for nonprofits is finding donors. And so we have these okay. connecting lists and we try to find someone who's interested in helping the cause. So we start with leads and and sure. So, uh, have you done any custom implementation because you wanted to work as a developer? Uh, have you done any custom developments with Apex and Visual Force? Your custom by custom implementation, you mean like code based or declarative? Uh, um, I mean, code based as well as declarative, like anything which is more complex than just out of box Salesforce configurations. Mm -hmm. uh, might be a mix, but more uh, importantly, I'm looking at. Uh, you know, Apex and Visual Force developments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't have any Visual Force uh, experience. I've focused my my uh, time on learning Lightning Web Components, uh, JavaScript, okay. and um, in terms of uh, like user interface changes, the kind of development I did with Lightning Web Component was just for personal projects, uh, not for nonprofits. And if you're interested, I can tell you about uh, that personal lighting of component projects that I've done, done for myself. Um, yes, I would like to know about like a lightning component that you developed. Yeah, so one, a lot of people are taking uh, Salesforce 
certification exams and the mm -hmm. cert results come to you as scores across the different sections of the exam mm -hmm. and you don't know what your real like total score is uh, like for a lot of exams the passing rate is uh, not passing grade is 65 percent and over but you just get pass or fail and then the section based scores so i create a lightning of component that uh, that uh, where you can enter your section based scores for different exams and then gives you the total like actual score you got 70 percent 75 percent and when you click uh, calculate it actually creates a record in uh, Salesforce and I thought that was convenient because uh, you don't need to use Excel and it's something I can put in a community and so other people can use and uh, take advantage oh, of oh. Right, awesome so you developed this lightning web component so do you know uh, can you tell me like what are the different uh, components of a web component lightning web component uh different components like different uh got it the bundle, like, bundle yeah what comes with the, the bundle, bundle yeah what comes with the bundle yeah of course yeah. so the core um the required the required items is the html this and the hmm? javascript file this okay. file and the test files are optional okay all right okay so uh have you Oh, do you know what's the uh, difference between the lightning web component and the lightning bundle it was there before this i don't mean it is still there uh, have you worked on any lightning components lightning components i'm assuming you mean uh, aura web aura components aura, aura components yeah 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 i i used to have experience initially when i just started learning a bit about aura components but i shifted my focus yeah. to totally on web components yeah that's the new thing yeah it's awesome uh, all right, so related to, uh, I think you, you would have done so much of de uh, declarative uh, developments. Yes. Uh, yes. Can you tell me something that you worked on? Yes, uh, certainly. One of the customizations I did for, it was for, um, for a museum in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a web to lead form. Okay. So they want to get member, members they want to find members, uh, people who are interested in getting annual membership for the museum. So I generated a very nice web to lead form, uh, customized the CSS so that it fits the museum's official colors. And right. I added it to the museum's uh, WordPress website. And this way, all the potential leads are now being directly uh, sourced in one campaign. And uh, now they don't need to manually move the data using data loader or data import wizard and uh, so this was uh, okay so uh, what happens when you want a new feed on the uh, web to lead form mm -hmm. uh, what do you do in that case like there are like four fields now like yes capture the web to lead and now yes. there's a new new information that you need to capture what what steps do you take yes yes so it, when you're generating the web to lead form, uh, it, the, it, it uh, tells you which field you want to put on the, on the form. So mm -hmm. I just select those fields and uh, okay. the Salesforce pre-populates the, 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 the code, the markup. All right. In future, if you want to add one more field to it, what would you do? Yes. You have to generate the form again or would you? Yes, yes, you're right. Uh, if you want to, I have, I, I guess you I, haven't done that, but I think you have to regenerate the form again. Yes, yes, I think then, you have to regenerate. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's web to lead. Uh, like, have you worked on uh, workflow rules, uh, process builders, uh, yes. you know, validation rules, certainly. anything which is declarative? Yes, certainly. I've worked on. Uh, all of the declarative tools except lightning flows i think so okay all right i can talk, tell you about some of the process builders that i've built for the, for mm -hmm. the um, yeah what yeah let me know like uh, if there is anything which is challenging that you built using sales tools that's what i would be more interested to know mm -hmm. um, because yeah. I, I know that, that you are comfortable with certain things but i just want to know what you what is more challenging Mm. that you worked on and now it's simple for you 
yeah the on the declarative side a lot of things are pretty straightforward because i can google mm -hmm. i can get help of the community and the special like trailblazer groups where i can post my questions people get back to me pretty fast i can also use the reddit uh, community for answers for me the most challenging are the triggers unit tests those things yeah. are not so intuitive for me and uh, like static versus non-static and so that's where I struggle a bit, but but okay. perseverance, I I'm able to to overcome. Right. So, do you know about the security uh, sharing and security uh, in Salesforce? Like how it does, uh, you know, starts with more restrictive to to something which is you know less restrictive based on you know who the actor is. Have you worked on setting those sharing and security? Yes, org. certainly. So, uh, according to the, I think the core sec core security principle of Salesforce, you want to mm -hmm. uh, people should only have access to information that they need. You don't you don't want to expose more information than they need. So uh, that's why on sharing settings, if if necessary, you make things private uh, unless it's absolutely essential. So one of the things. I did for one of the nonprofits is that uh, the the sharing settings for the for the opportunity object was private because we didn't want the salespeople uh, seeing each other's opportunities, what deals they're working on, uh, or be, be jealous with each other. So that's why <laughs> I had to yeah. uh, what what we did is the opportunity sharing settings was private. And okay. then if they needed the help of someone else, a colleague of theirs to help with closing an opportunity was uh, opportunity teams. And they, okay. had the, they had the capability to edit the opportunity team, the default opportunity team, and then they get okay. the, uh, the access what they want. Exactly, okay. read or read, read, write. Okay. So, um, there's also one more setting like if, if you want the account right uh, would that automatically give access to that opportunity even if I didn't create it uh, is, is there something that you can do on the sharing setting or somewhere in on the maybe a specific term which I'm looking for specific yeah. like profiles roles like where do you set something uh, just for you know opportunity cases that is an option um, where you can when you want something like an account you you can read write anything which is sure uh, on the account do you sure. know two ways okay. to accomplish it i think okay or what you're alluding to uh, yeah. so if, for example maybe there is someone from the legal department or the audit department who needs to have view access to all the possible opportunity records but the mm -hmm. opportunity object has private sharing settings so uh one thing you can do is uh, on the opportunity object for that user's profile, you can make it uh, view all. Uh, view, view all. Another thing you can do is uh, if that user needs view all or modify all on all objects, mm -hmm. not just opportunity, uh, you can okay. do, you can go to the system permissions and give them the relevant um, checkbox. Okay. And do you know uh, there is also an option for grant access using hierarchy yes you, yes if, if it's, you know what that means if, if 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 someone like your boss or your boss's boss needs to have access to the opportunities of their subordinates okay then we can enable grant access um, okay using all right awesome okay so uh that's uh what do you okay you start with a uh, private sharing so what what are profiles for like is it like uh, something which opens up more access or is it more restrictive? What, yeah. what do profiles do? Yeah, profiles, so sharing settings is about what kind of access you have to records you, you don't own. And profiles is about, is about what can you do with records? Uh, for example, can you create records? Can you, uh, can you edit records? Uh -huh. mm, can you view records in a certain object so okay. they're on top of each other or they're not okay 
Mm-hmm. And what about uh, okay? So we we have this uh, sharing setting, profiles, roles, and then sharing rules. Sharing rules, yes. Right. So we start with uh, the most restrictive, which is org wide default sharing. Yes. Right. I think profile does it open up access, more access on those that restrictive you know sharing setting that that we have set org wide. Does profile add more to it? Yes, if if you if yeah. you do yeah. if you do view all modify all, it mm-hmm. will open up more access for the okay. user. And uh, roles, I think it also opens up more access. And yes. then sharing setting opens up even more access. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sharing rules can open even more, and permission sets even more, and okay. And okay, have you worked on triggers? Yes, I love working on triggers. Yeah. Okay. What are different, uh, uh, you know, operations based on which the, the triggers actually trigger actually runs on in Salesforce? Like, what are the different options mm-hmm. that we have for triggering a trigger? Yes. So, the context variables for triggers are uh, insert, update, delete, and delete, and uh, we can. We can so like uh, before and after before operation before and after yeah, each of these DML operations. Uh, do you have you encountered any issues in a trigger? You know something that you cannot perform within a trigger. Yes, something, some, some, compl- some. I know you haven't uh, worked that much on the triggers. Yeah, you don't like it, but I, I just want to know like what are what are your difficulties or what are the operations that you couldn't perform. In the trigger, yeah. that's what I wanted to know. Yeah, yeah, there were a lot of actually difficulties, uh, <laughs> but I'm trying to think okay. of the most difficult one. Pop, pop, pop. I see. I, from you need to test this one thing that you said. Yeah. From, from what I've seen, um, from what I've seen online, is that a lot of people suggest using trigger maps. So I had mm-hmm. difficulty in, okay. in accessing the records. Okay. Have you come across any uh, Salesforce governor limits while you were, you know, either doing a declarative uh, program? I mean, Salesforce or you know, mm-hmm. development with Apex and, and triggers or whatever it is. Yeah, Have you encountered any governor limits? Yeah, governor limits. I've hit. I've hit the governor limits um, when I was when I was using the. Um, when I was so basically, governor limits are just some limitations mm-hmm. in, in in Apex, and the one that I've come across, I think, was was um, was was the number of SQL queries. Mm-hmm. I've, okay. I've come across a whole bunch of them, yeah, in my okay. practicing and trying to understand, learn Salesforce. Uh, uh, okay, I mean, there are many. Uh, Salesforce is a shared environment. Yes. So, so yeah, there are like restrictions on everything that you can do, and uh, that makes you a d- better uh, developer too. Like work within the limitations, which yeah. makes you a better programmer rather than you do whatever you want. That will break the system. So uh, that's one thing. Uh, have you integrated Salesforce with any external applications? Um, I haven't integrated Salesforce with external application as part of my like professional okay. experience with nonprofits, but I've done the exercises on Trailhead where okay. you do RESTful integration okay. and, and then writing a unit test for the RESTful integration, doing a mock mock callout. Mm-hmm. Uh, Have you uh, installed uh, any app exchange packages and customized it for your use? Mm, that's a good idea. I I, I haven't uh, installed open source app exchange um, packages where I can play around with their integration. I've only done okay. the ones on Trailhead. I'm sure you would have uh, uh, downloaded some unmanaged package from what Trailhead would offer and then use it for your yes. testing or your training. Uh, yes. That's unmanaged. Yeah, I'm looking more of like you know. Okay, I, I think you haven't worked on yet, but like 
uh, an already existing application like an uh, you know actors uh, docusign ecosign uh, conga okay. you know yeah. marketo yes and i haven't had experience with with uh, with those uh, i've only been okay all right no problem um, have you worked on this bad jobs you know what what it, what a bad job means yes i've i've uh, i've actually been looking at it the last couple of weeks um, bad jobs and um, it's a fascinating tool that salesforce offers okay. for us to uh, process a large number of records uh, without breaking the governor limits by chunking it into batch batch sizes of our choosing and uh, do you know why do we go for batch versus a trigger yes uh, yes yes from my understanding uh, we use bad jobs uh, because it's asynchronous it's, okay uh, we can control the batch size uh, if we break governor limits we can make the batch size as small as we want up to one and uh, but so something which is not critical that you do in a batch asynchronous way yeah something maybe you okay. can schedule overnight over the weekend okay uh, have you migrated data from an external system like have you loaded something into salesforce i know you would have done with uh, trailhead they would have given some sample data so what uh, have you had experience uploading data into salesforce yeah i've um, I've uploaded data using data import wizard, data loader, yeah. and uh, I've heard about data loader IO, but I haven't used it myself. Okay, what 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 is what are the deployment tools that you use from deploying from one environment to the other environment? Yeah, um, I've used two tools. One is yeah. the chain set, uh, yeah. but the chain set can only deploy between related organizations, yep, and related orgs. Okay, and the other option. If I have to deploy something between non-related orgs, I would mm -hmm. use the unmanaged package. Unmanaged package. Yes. Okay. So you just uh, export it as a package and un exactly. uh, just deploy it. Exactly. Okay. I would use the. Do you use ant tool? Do you use ant tool or SFD? I've heard about it, but I'm I'm just haven't had an haven't had a situation where. Uh, where unmanaged package failed, forcing mm -hmm. you to use an ant tool. Okay. All right. Um, sounds good. Just uh, that's pretty much. I think uh, uh, there's uh, anything that any questions that you have. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Based on what questions that I asked you. Thank you. I I uh, I had a couple of questions about the job description. I saw that the job description said uh, three years required, but I have uh, like I have like learning experience, volunteering experience, but I don't have professional uh, experience that I can uh, that I can show. Uh, how how do you look at candidates who don't have the required years of experience? Um, I mean. Uh, definitely the uh, the the challenges are a little different when you work on a real environment uh, rather than what you use trailhead for and play with certain things because you are uh, going to work on something uh, like develop on something which is already having a lot of customization so that's why i think we are looking for like three years experience at least to understand like also what's in the system and build on top of it without breaking the system so um, yeah, so this is uh, for a junior developer role, um, you know, based on what we are looking for, but mm -hmm. what, based on what you have worked on, there are like so many things that you can work in Salesforce. Like we are looking um, basically uh, on the development end, how how much uh, you know developments that you that that you have done. Like all the systems, they start with a basic declarative, uh, you know, setup first, and then. Mm -hmm. After uh, after some time, it is all customizations, and then you cannot avoid having triggers, bad jobs, you know, apex switcher pools, and then lightning components, because uh, you know it, the requirements, uh, you know, they are they go in a different tangent. Like Salesforce uh, releases features every every now and then to you know accommodate those, and then they get into declarative space. But uh, until then, we have to develop something which is custom. So yeah, I mean, 
uh, based on uh, you know whatever points that I have gathered, I think uh, uh, I will be able to conclude like what you yeah. would be fit for, like what requirements we can fit you in. Okay. So it's it's all right that I don't have professional like experience uh, in an IT company, a consulting company. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so uh, I mean, this is not something which uh, you look at that that way. Like, like I, I'm just looking at what all uh, we want, and then based on that, yeah. whether yeah. you were able to, you actually really worked on it. That's what I want to know, and then uh, uh, that's why I was asking only the le relevant detail questions on what you worked on. Like I don't want you to say something which uh, you never worked on. Like ask on, uh, ask on something which you never worked on. So I just at least whatever you worked on, I want to know if you worked on totally from end to end, even if it's a small thing. That's what I'm looking at. So the, uh, professional experience is not that important. Like. If you are able to, uh, if you worked on something, you should be able to tell like what uh, A to Z of what you worked on. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much. Okay, thank you very much for the explanation. Also, I was wondering, do you guys use a project management tool like Jira for? Yes, for um, yes, we use uh, Jira. Great. Uh, and also we, Salesforce, with Salesforce, we always like, now also with the other industry uh, you know benchmark we use agile methodology for salesforce develop i mean software development so even the salesforce space uh, we we follow like the like whole company follows a two sprint uh, like uh, time frame within which we accommodate a set of requirements uh, if it cannot fit we just break it up into different stories in jira and then assign uh, like we plan as a team and then we take on those in, in the sprint and then work towards the completion and then okay. if we cannot complete something we just push it over the next sprint Great. like close the effort whatever was done in that sprint yeah Great. that's that's pretty much uh, like i think followed by every other industry nowadays yeah i haven't used jira professionally but i've been learning by myself i signed up for the free jira account and i've been uh, Creating it's projects. not too, I mean, there are like so many customizations that uh, they would do with Z Jira. Like today we have uh, like story square, we link our deployments through Jira. We like whatever review we, we do, we link the test cases that we uh, run uh, for certain stories. Uh, and then if we want to go through all those, if something changes in, in that functionality, we just check all the stories and all the tests under it run like in an automated fashion. That's all like we are getting there, but you know, it's, there are like so many, so many things that you can do and, but we can start with what Jira offers, like creating stories. It's basically to capture uh, whatever uh, effort and description of the story. And then whatever we have done, any comments that we, uh, you know, exchange with, you know, fellow developers or the business, Oh. And also the test test requirements. Yeah. Great. Do you also use GitHub? Yes. Uh, we use GitHub. I mean, for Salesforce. Uh, I mean, it used to be uh, just Salesforce before. We just have to maintain our code in local, or we just extract it, and but we never had version control in Salesforce. So yeah, we use um, GitHub to you know have a backup of all the metadata as well as uh, we use it for. Uh, no, on CI/CD right now, um, so we use it for release management. We we do reviews. We 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 promote code from one environment to another environment using uh, GitHub and VSet. So we use the GitHub tool for deploy as a deployment tool. Uh, GitHub as the version controlling, and then we 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 merge the functionalities of both to use it as a uh, you know continuous integration. Awesome, awesome. I I I've, I've... I've been exploring GitHub, create my, creating my own repository, putting some of my light move components and the Apex triggers unit tests into my into my account. And awesome, yeah. That those things will be like really uh, you know required for any company that you are going to work for. Awesome. Uh, I mean, most probably all companies use the same for you know agile development methodology. Same thing. Cool. 
Morale, thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for the opportunity to interview with you. I'm excited about the next steps and I hope uh, I can make it. Oh, nice talking to you too. I'll, I will let you know, like based on what uh, I have recorded, I'll discuss with the team and then I get back to you. What will be, what will it be? <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah.